What is the significance of the ultimate breaks and beats? That is like the holy grail of anything that samples, you know, like just breaks. And I know, in this, especially in the West Coast, that was that was end all, be all, because we didn't know anything all about that. You know, we mostly know what was like funk, you know, like, but samples, what's that? You know, like, that, you know, that was mostly an East Coast thing. But uh, I remember the first, the first person <clears throat> To actually sell that was Steve Yano. When he rest in peace, he's uh, he was the owner of uh, he sold records over the Rhodium Swap Meet over in, in in Gardena, and that's pretty much a swap meet where like uh, where basically Dr. Dre would make his infamous Rhodium mixtapes. And WA's uh, first album straight out of Compton was made off of Ultimate Breaks and Beats because of that, and he got those records from Steve Yano. If he had those records. I was like, oh man, you were the man. Because those are expensive. They were expensive back then. Just even buy one. Like LPs back then was what? Either $10.99 or, or was it $15, $12, $15.99, whatever. So you bought one. Imagine you had to buy two. That's like 24 bucks. You had to like, well, which one do I get? You know, and there was like, I think there was 22, 22 volumes. But you still wanted like, you had to buy one. Oh, get this one i'll buy this one later you know like that if you're a dj you had to get that that is mo very monumental it's very important that's how important ultimate breaks and beats is to hip-hop the backstory for the uh 24 7 hh mixtape funk mode uh that i did in 2009 Hey, 2008, 2008. It was like, it was a, the crazy story is that uh, my man Jello, I've known him since since the mid 90s, uh, reached, reached out to me. You know, he liked that I was playing breaks, like original samples or even, you, you know, uh, you know, just just raw shit. And he's like, yo, you, you need to make a mixtape for me. Can you do something like the vein for this mix that you did? I was like, I think I can do that. You know, let's let's think of concept. You know, Jello's always he's always has ideas running left and right. So he's like he's thinking all these things, and he came out with a, you know like let's call it funk mode because it's like raw funk, but like you know with a lot of drum breaks and stuff. You know, and and, and, it, and it sounds real raw. And so it's like okay, you know it's like northern soul funk. So I was like okay, let's do that. So I you know. Took the idea, make the mixtape, did as best as I can. Based upon what he heard on the mixtape, he he flipped it. And the, the marketing genius that he is, he he flipped it into a, do, the, to promote the mixtape is actually making it uh, uh, give it out to the blogs and then to spe to specific people, send them actual deodorant with the with the artwork of the mixtape that says funk mode. So. And because of that, that actually, you know, got some buzz off of Two Dope Boys, I think Complex. And the response was really good because they, I think, if I did it in 2008, they released it like either December 2008 or January 2009. At the time, you know, there, you know, no one was doing mixtapes like that, you know, with that type of music. So, it, you know, it was, you know, people were like, hey, man, it's good to hear James Brown, some B-Boy breaks. It was a good time. It was a good time to make that mixtape. It was fun. If you want to hear the, the Funk Mode mixtape, you can uh, go to uh, 247hh.com. When people say, you know, who are your top three? I never hear people say Lars Professor, but they don't realize how much he's influenced the game, you know? And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of his personality too, because he's just a humble, chill cat, but he definitely should get more love than he gets. I'll throw in Ali Shaheed Muhammad from Tribe Called Quest. I mean, he's done so much, so much dope stuff within Tribe, outside the Tribe that people don't know. You know, DJing is weird now. With all the technology, it's just, it just seems like the whole level raised. But then certain aspects of it dropped also. So, you know, I think we're at a weird point in the circle where the playing field is really leveled. You know, like, it's not as hard to get a song anymore as it was back in the day. When we first came in the game, it was that era and time when DJs actually spent the music that they like. Now, they're spending music for whatever reason. I really don't know firsthand because I haven't, I, I'm not involved with that. But you know, I mean, it's gotta be some reason why there's not all, a, a, a lot of good music on, the, on yeah. the radio. What I want EBB to remember to be remembered as that we were most definitely instrumental for keeping hip hop, hip hop. Because I think that the, 
the backbone that hip hop was losing in the drum machine era of hip hop, we were able to facilitate when the sampling craze came in. 